Welcome to Monday's Positive Parenting Zoom video call, how to keep yourself encouraged and spread it around. What a great topic for these times. <laughs> we totally need this one. What is, when I say encouragement, what is it? Like, when I say that, just give, throw out some definitions, like what you think it means. I like to think of it as like a add a girl kind of pat on the back. It's when you feel like someone's telling you, you you're doing something right. What else? So giving someone giving someone courage giving courage yeah i mean that's part of the word to to encourage it's to give them courage to give courage hope and confidence so we're going to do an exercise are we more encouraging or discouraging to ourselves so you're going to share with your partner or partners partner three things that, that you either don't like or would like to change about yourself so three things that you don't like or would like to change about yourself Ready, go. So I procrastinate. I don't always say what I want. And then I get upset when I don't get it. <laughs> I wish I were more assertive. Okay, that was miserable. <laughs> but uh, yeah, how was that for everybody else? Uh, actually, uh, it was fun sharing all those things. Actually, we got a chance to think about ourselves uh, after a long time. And that was something different. And I want to say this class is getting more, more and more interesting day by day. <laughs> I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> I'm enjoying it a lot. It's right. like getting personal. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. For sure. Okay. So, yeah. So, that was, that was like depressing. And, but, all, you know, we're going to, we're going to, compare that to this next exercise. So we're gonna do the same thing again, Jody. Um, only this time I want you to um, tell your partner three things that you love about yourself, okay? It says, now you guys are all on mute so I couldn't hear this, but it says notice all the groaning. <laughs> Usually if I'm in a class and I say, say three things you love about yourself, everybody is like, ugh. <laughs> Um, and it's and I for think, you. You're sharing about what you love yeah. about you. Well, I'm going to say what I love about me is the way that my grandkids sit here quietly with me and I teach parenting and I get to be like, yeah, they're doing it. <laughs> Silly. Um, but any, anything that you love about yourself. So three things each way. And um, yeah, what I love about myself is and fill out that question. And it can be as a parent or anything else. It doesn't matter. We're just doing it. Laura, good to see Magali. Hello. You got a little with you. Okay. What do I love? I am super friendly and I like talking to strings, especially seriously. And I can find joy in lots of things. Those are my three. Oh. I think I was supposed to give everybody an extra minute in that one because that time flew by. <laughs> was it good? We need more time. Like, oh, we need more time. <laughs> you want so more time? How was, that, how was that for you guys? Was that easier or harder? Let's have some shares comparing them. I'll share. Thank you. Um, you know. I think it... Well, both were fairly easy for me because right now in this space, I, there's a lot of things I'm not liking about myself. Um, so I was able to come up with things very easily. Um, I actually had a little bit harder time doing the things that I love about myself. Um, but the person that I was paired up with, like, she's, she's amazing. And so I just wanted to thank her <laughs> for that. <laughs> Right on, right on. Yeah, I mean, that, the, the purpose of this exercise is to just make an observation. Am I more encouraging or discouraging to myself? And, you know, you do that by just comparing how easy the two exercises were. Um, Janelle, what were you going to say? Because you came off mute too. I was going to say that um, the second one, we all, all needed more time because we needed more time to think about what we liked about ourselves, but we can easily rattle off all the things that we didn't like. Yeah. Um, but it was very refreshing to hear that we're not alone because in the four boxes, there was so much commonality of the things we didn't like um, and the things that we liked. So, um, but we needed more time on the, the second part. I agree. <laughs> Note to self for next time I do this exercise. Jody, go ahead. 
I was going to say, how was it listening to other people talk about what they like about themselves? Was it easy to see that quality in them? I mean, these are complete strangers. I don't know that anybody knows anybody around here, but could you relate or did it seem like, oh yeah, you seem like that kind of person? Why is it easier to be discouraging? First reason is we were raised with criti criticism because parents think that criticism will motivate us. <clears throat> there was a minister's father who grew up during the depression and he was very disappointed with his life, how it turned out. We don't want to hear this now because we're kind of in a depression. <laughs> but, you know, we're looking at this, like we're going to have this whole generation of people living through this, this depression of what, whatever we're going to end up calling it. Um, and how we pull out of this is going to be really interesting to our children, and in my case, my grandchildren's future. So when this minister had, had a family and his son was born, he decided to help him have a better life than he had. And so he pointed out every single mistake that his son ever made, and he criticized him frequently to make sure to help his son know what was the right way and the better way to do things. So of course, this minister grew up criticizing every move that he made and finding fault with everything that he did. And it took him years to overcome his self-critical behavior. So we do what was done to us because it's the only ideas we have. And I think that's what lands a lot of us in parenting classes. I know for me, like I didn't, I didn't like what I was raised with, but I didn't know what to do instead. And that's kind of, one of the big ahas that I had when I started taking parenting classes was having this whole new world open up to me of ideas and tools and ways to communicate that I had never been exposed to. Another reason that it's really easy to be discouraging is because we live in a competitive society. The Buffalo Bills professional football team, I hope all of you have heard of them. <laughs> These are girls, they should have figured out. Well, anyway, I like football. Um, it was the second best football team in the world for four years in a row. Every year, they lost the Super Bowl to a different team for four years in a row. Were they acknowledged for making it to the Super Bowl four years in a row, which no team had ever done? No, they were admonished and called losers because they didn't win it in any of those four years. So this, this competitiveness and this being the best is one of the things that I think takes us all down. In the class, uh, we talk about helping our children learn to do their personal best rather than being the best. And I'll go into much more details about why that's important to their self-esteem. Um, <clears throat> the other one, and I think Jody, Jody's question spoke to this, we don't want to be thought as bragging or boastful. It's okay to think that we are or have done something well, but don't think we'll be, you know, that we're great or we'll become a braggart. Remember, pride goeth before a fall, that's an old saying. So we, we get told this as children, like don't brag or get a swelled head and it really discourages us from expressing and being able to talk positively about what we do well. And I mean, this is important. Why is this important? Why is it important that we help our kids learn to talk positively about themselves? Anyone? And, and not discourage them and say you're gonna be, get a swelled head. I think it goes to their self-worth. Right, and how is, that, how is that gonna play out when they're older? Good question. <laughs> Hopefully Laurel, better than with us. <laughs> yeah, Laurel, go ahead, what are you gonna say? Well, what, just what you said earlier, we tend to repeat the past, so not only will it form their self-opinion now, but then they're gonna pass that on, and there's a, there's a repeating right. element to that. Right. Donna? I forgot. Uh, I was going to say, oh, it will build those, their self-confidence. Um, yeah. And so, so the thing is, if you, if we, um, if we discourage them from expressing like, here, who, here's who I am and here's what I do well, if, if we discourage that by saying, don't, you're going to get a swelled head, then what, one of the things that we have to be able to do as adults is to sell ourselves on a job. Like, you know, like this is who I am and this is what I do well. And if our esteem is so low because we've been told don't brag, don't talk about yourself in a positive way, we'll be inept at doing that. We won't have the ability to do that. We have to sell ourselves to a good relationship, right? We, we find a really the right person. If our esteem isn't enough to say, hey, I'm worth it. I'm like, like, you're lucky to get me. Like we have to have 
a good self-esteem to attract an equally high self-esteem partner. So it's really important that our kids learn to talk positively about themselves. And in the class, when we, go, when we do an exercise that's more deep than this, um, I'll help you with understanding, we'll look at the nuance between bragging being arrogant versus having strong self-esteem, because that's our fear. And that's why we say the discouraging words, don't brag, don't blah, 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 because we don't want them to become like arrogant bullies. But they won't, I promise you, they won't. So um, more tools for this down the pike. Another reason that we're often more discouraging to ourselves is that we believe the negative things that we were told as a child. You're always clumsy. Can't you do anything right? I guess you're just not good at, and fill in the blank, math, art, sewing, dancing, singing, whatever. And these things that we're told as kids form the core of our belief system. My dad told me I was tone deaf. I used to play the piano and I don't know what tone deaf means, but I know you will never catch me singing like in front of anybody. And even when I sang to my grandkids, maybe my grandkids, they, my, and my kids, in fact, is Michelle still on here? My daughter popped in on the Facebook thing. When I would sing Rockabye Baby to them when they were little, they would cry. Like, that's how bad. <laughs> Not only do I sing bad, but I think I sing bad, and I don't I think I have any skills for it. And this was because my dad told me I was tone deaf. Like, don't say that to your kids. <laughs> It'll just discourage the heck out of me. Um, we're afraid to fail or make a mistake, so we don't even try. Remember, Thomas Edison invented over 1,600 other things before he created what he started out to create, the light bulb. So he had 1,600 mistakes, like not it. Yes. Okay, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Okay, that's all I said. Good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we believe it's somebody else's job to make us happy and keep us encouraged. This is that external motivation versus internal motivation. Um, and then our critical parent is often louder than our nurturing parent. So we all have a critical parent and a nurturing parent in our head. Most of us have a very loud critical parent and a very soft nurturing parent, especially if our real parents are, were critical. So these voices that live here like on our shoulder, most of them started with our parents. So whatever our parents said to us a lot, that becomes our self-talk. And then as we grow up, become adults, it either stays there or we do therapy to get rid of it and bring our own self-talk in. <laughs> so, you know, looking and listening to our, the, the, the voices that are talking to us and deciding like who we're gonna listen to. And if we don't like one of the voices there, you have to like go in and introspect and find out where did that voice come from? Whose is it? And work with it in some way. And most of the time that takes some kind of therapy. Okay, that's what I have for today. So tomorrow I'll start off with Oh, thank goodness. Ways to become more encouraged for today, you all. Thank you for being here. Yeah, I look good. forward to tomorrow. And uh, bye. Bye. you can unmute everybody if you can. Unmuted. There we go. Yay. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Remember what you like about yourself. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye. You like thank you. Yourself. Thanks, you <laughs> We appreciate you all. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, thank both you. of you. <laughs> pleasure good Yay. to see you have a lovely day and night wherever you are in the world bye good job mamas thank you bye